lethal powers to do it. That's all it is. Because pretty much the mentality that Drathus has in this case is fight fire with fire. Use evil to defeat evil. Is he smart for doing that? You could say no. But again, that's exactly what he's doing. He's fighting evil with evil, which would make sense for him to use the Dark King's... Uh, which is why he would create the... Well, somebody else technically created the forge for him. And we've already technically seen him in a game... Because I named a character, in, I named my character in Diablo three that character, but we didn't technically see him in terms of anything else. And I kind of want to just still keep the name as much as I can hidden, but it's not gonna happen. But again, yeah. So the lair has little to no reason for being there. Now, while I was uh, preoccupied with something else, uh, I came up with an idea that made sense due to the story in which uh, for, for Drathus and for the heart itself as well. So it has been established, well, I say established, but you guys may not be aware, uh, that there was a power in which that Drathus had to absorb, which is the embodiment of complete evil. And his power's name was called the Eternal Darkness, which is why that there is a spell tome called that in the mod now. <clears throat> because it became the new headcanon, pretty much. Anyway. Now, while Drathus technically, like, absorbed this power, uh, you could say that because it was the embodiment of evil, and because Drathus was a good guy, it wanted to have a space of its own. So, instead, it created the... Uh, it created the... Oh, that's weird. I don't have a spot specifically for warp to, for crying obsidian. Well, that's fine. I can put it there then. But yeah, so back on topic. So we're back on topic to this. So the eternal darkness uh, would have created a small pocket for itself, which it would have done. So you could say that the vile layer was that pocket. Now, the reason why Drathus never knew about it was because uh, the heart never informed him of it because it wasn't really something that he should be aware of, in a way so it wouldn't have been it wouldn't have uh, informed him of it but another reason is because the place was always incomplete the eternal darkness was always 90 percent like like complete so while it created the lair all nice and shiny kind of thing, it forgot to put the door to go in. So pretty much nobody could go in it. And while that could be one of the head cannons that could be there, another one is that the evil Dark King, the one who originally created the heart, Archimus, uh... Uh, originally created the uh, the lair specifically for him to inhabit while he was waiting for him to for himself to have more than enough energy and more than enough power to escape from the heart itself so that he can go and wreak havoc on the world this one's very very loose though like it's it's a very loose thread and I don't like that that it's so loose that it doesn't it's not that it doesn't make any sense, it's that it just doesn't feel like it, that's exactly what would have happened. So I don't like it nearly as much, but it can fit. 
it's just not the way that I want it to. It's just not the the system that I want it. If that makes sense. And uh, the other thing as well is a combination of the two. So Arkmus was first created the lair, and then the Eternal Darkness sort of upgraded it. But again, because Arkmus was more of a spirit, and so technically is the Eternal Darkness, they both forgot to put a door. Again, this is not the way that I want it, but again, same thing. And the way that this power would be fully... And this power would be complete with the help of a ring. What's the name of the said ring? Well, you're going to find out when I actually update my mod, which will hopefully be uh, soon. Right now, I'm just doing bug fixes and any name changes if there need to be. But again, if, if it all goes according to plan, you will see it very soon, actually, since it is, uh, it is planned. Okay, I'm going to put these in here for now because Blackstone, I think, has like... No, it's Deep Slate. There's too many variants. Yeah. I don't really care about Blackstone right now. As sad as it is, I don't really care about it. But yeah, so technically, Drathus did actually get a... Like, the Dark King did get an upgrade in this uh, new version. However, it's player-based. And a lot of the planned features that I had beforehand will be added. And each and every area will be unique in a way. To what I believe that each and every area should be. So what I was thinking though was that for the uh, Dumbarrow Cave, or as I'm going to nickname it, uh, the Hideout is going to be where you would stash your valuables. So like your gold, your uh, your very enchanted artifacts that you don't want anybody to touch uh, kind of area. Or for testing items that I created specifically just so I could test around a few features. But I necessarily don't want people to kind of find them in a way. And the lair, or the vile lair, or deep scorn hollow, or as I'm going to nickname it, the lair, uh, that in particular is going to be for anything that is morally compromising. So like something that could give you cheats kind of situation, or something that can affect the moral character of a person pretty much. So something that can manipulate your fame or infamy kind of thing. Not in the way of the uh, of the orb that allows you to change whatever's lower, your infamy or fame, to your higher, the the other one, pretty much. So if you have let's uh, let's say fifty fame and ten infamy, after a day your fame will go to fifty one and your infamy will go down to nine. That's what that orb does, but it takes twenty four hours each and every time. Same idea. Well, this one's going to be different, where it's going to be like a tablet that'll allow you to sort of manipulate it in a way. And one of the actually like cool systems that I wanted to build in place for uh, the Dark King was a separate infamy and fame and bounty system specifically for the Dark King towards the player itself. So if you've ever actually finished the Thieves Guild. Mind you, there's a ton of videos of people actually going through the Thieves Guild, so very unlikely that you would not have heard of this item. But there's an item called the Great Cowl of Nocturnal. How this item script works is that when you equip it, your bounty is changed to five. Uh, your bounty is changed to five hundred, and your infamy is changed to a hundred. But your fame and your original infamy are completely gone. Now, they're not gone technically forever. They're just gone temporarily, I believe. I haven't, actually haven't looked at the script. The only difference for mine is that you're going to be able to manipulate the fame and the infamy of both of them. 
of whichever one that you're currently in. So if you're currently wearing, let's say, like if you currently conjured the armor, you're going to be manipulating the Dark King's fame. But if you're not wearing the armor, you're manipulating your character's fame. So it's much different. And how I was, how I was going to do this was that I was going to make the orb called the, the influence orb be able to deal with all of this shenanigans. However, that idea got scrapped because of how certain items, like certain things, so I decided against that. So instead I'm going to add it to conjure and revert thy form. So conjure is going to change you from your fame and infamy to the Dark King's fame and infamy and bounty technically. And how the revert thy form is going to work is that it's going to convert uh, the Dark King's fame and infamy back to your fame and infamy. And that's how that system is going to work. Which I think would be a very cool system, but this would also cause a few issues with our playthrough. If you don't know what I'm talking about, allow me to explain. I'm going to find a spot for this stuff later. I actually thought we'd actually get all this done before the end of the session, but I guess not. My bad. Uh, so, again, allow me to explain why this would cause issues for our character. So, if you are not fully aware, allow me to explain. So, our character in the Oblivion mod playthrough has been playing with the armor the entire time without this fame and infamy system pre-placed. So if after that fact, I would have to go through either the entire series video by video in order to figure out what quests we've done with the armor equipped and without the armor equipped in order for, for both the Dark King and our player to have the accurate fame and infamy count that it should technically have. However, this causes an issue. For, for me, mostly. I have to go through... Uh, how many videos technically do I have? I think I have like 324 videos. That means I have to sit through all of that footage. Yeah, 324. At the time of this recording, I think... Oops, my bad. Uh, at the time of this recording, I think only three... 22 went up that means i'd have to shift through all of that all of those videos find out what each and every quest gives at any stage and do that for each individual so if we're wearing the dark king's armor and let's say a quest gives you 10 fame that means the dark king gets 10 fame and our character loses 10 fame so what i'm thinking thinking for it is that i'll just make both of them equal at some point but then still keep Thing there now there is an item that is geared towards fame that I have however it's already been technically future proofed for this change in a way so it works because of how the system is going to work it's going to change your character's infamy and fame to what technically it should be for each individual character but there is a weapon that only works if the Dark King's infamy, or fame, sorry, is at 100. So guess what that means? It's already been future-proofed because it takes what your player's current infamy, and, or current fame is, or technically it takes both, and then it subtracts the fame, or the infamy from the fame, and then it figures out if you're worthy. You have to have pretty much 100 fame over your infamy in order to wear the sword. Or pretty much to equip this sword. Anyway. So pretty much, if you think about it that way, this sword has already been future-proof. Because if you try to equip the sword while you're not the Dark King, it'll tell you that you are not the Dark King, you cannot hold it. So, it's already been future-proofed already. The only problem is that, like, right now for a modded playthrough character, it doesn't work that way. 
And because a lot of the characters that I have currently are already using the older version, I don't know how well it's going to translate towards the, the current version that, like, all the characters are using. But yeah, so that's pretty much what I got to work on. Uh, I'll pretty much finish all this stuff off screen. I'm sorry. I thought that this was going to be done like, like this was going to be done in like a half an hour because usually I'm quite fast at doing this. But I guess talking about oblivion, well, mainly it's all tools. So I guess I could be excused for that since they were all mostly tools and these were all technically not separated in any way, shape or form. So yeah. And plus, these also need to be empty, too. These red ones. And this purple one. All this stuff needs to be empty. And this just needs a spot. And all these need to go to that book area. But yeah. So that's going to be it for now. I apologize for the fact that we took so long into doing this. However, I wanted to show off that there was a lot of changes happening to this area. And not to mention, though, that, like... You know, like, there's still things in the pipework that are being done. Uh, so, yeah, so I'll see you guys next time for some more Circa Craft.